today on Oz. The one. We watch you every day. <laughs> the only. I'm still a work in progress. Barbara Streisand. I want women to be powerful. Her passion to fight the number one killer in women. One out of three of you will die of it. And the moment she never expected. Have you ever held a heart? No, but I'd like to. Oh my God. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. I'm happy, so happy today because someone I consider a dear friend is joining us today, Barbara Streisand. She's one of the most accomplished and famous entertainers in the world. She's also, though, a loving wife, a mom, and a fierce advocate for women. Today, she's here with important health information I want every woman to hear. Please welcome Barbara Streisand. <laughs> I gotta admit, I, I actually invited you here for quality control purposes. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you why. So five years ago, we just launched a show and I get a note from Barbara. She says, I, I need to meet with you, it's important. So I went over and I walk in the room and she has a big, long legal pad with all these notes. And I thought, it must be some health crisis going on here. So I'm just trying to be as professional as I can. And she starts off by saying, you know, when you walk in front of the truth tube over there, there's a big shadow on your neck and, and your makeup makes you look orange. <laughs> and you talk too darn fast. <laughs> and this went on and on, an entire pad of stuff. So I'm very appreciative. I followed all your advice. I'm speaking much well, more slowly. I think slowly. like a director, so I'm looking at you going, you know, very objectively. And that's because I love you. Thank you very and much. And we tape your show and we watch you <laughs> every day. <laughs> well, you care about so many things. So and I get emails from Barbara, and I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these. Oh, there, there's, the, there's one here about aspirin. When's the right time to take it, morning oh, or right, night? Right, right. Question about what's the right source of omega-3s. This is an interesting one. Uh, watching your show about back pain and mustard, but you didn't say, do you eat it or rub it in? <laughs> now, now, you're supposed to, by the way, eat the stuff. You eat one of those mustard packets for back pain. What would have happened <laughs> if you hadn't emailed me? Would Jim be slathering you up with mustard? Because when I was a kid, my mother used to put mustard plasters on me. And that got rid of your cough. Uh, I bet you that was better than what they have today. It probably is. In fact, you, know? you look at a lot of different ways of healing. You've, you and Jim both, I, I love the fact that you've been so curious about your health. What do you think is the single most important thing that you guys do to stay healthy? What we do to stay yeah. healthy? Hmm. <laughs> Things oh. you can talk about in national television. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hmm. Well, we try to eat very good, mm -hmm. very well. Very well. Um, during the week, that's what we do. In other words, uh, Renata, who's been with us for a very long time, you know, makes very healthy things, mostly vegetables, lentils, things like that, quinoa. Uh, during the weekend, though, <laughs> all bets are off. Well, that's all right, you enjoy life. Because I love coffee ice cream, and we go to friends' houses, and I can't resist even the bread. I am a, I am a food addict, to tell you the truth. I am literally a food addict. I cannot stay away from foods that I love, which are bad for me. Yeah. You know, like carbs that are bad. So I'm still a work in progress as far as Well, you're nutrition. doing very well. Now, we mm -hmm. had the best time. You, the new issue of The Good Life, Barbara agreed to yeah. be in the magazine. We did a big photo shoot. You're, it's, it's an issue you're passionate about, with which is women and heart yeah. disease. But just right. to give you an idea, uh, I asked Jim, who's a dear, to just pop down for the photo shoot. So I actually saved this picture. When I asked him to pop no. down, this is literally what he did. He popped down in his surfer pants. That is my jacket. Took off, my jacket took off my back, by the way, that he's wearing. He looks very good in it, better than me. Is he wearing shorts? Wearing shorts. I didn't publish that picture, by the way. very funny. Thank you. On his behalf. But I love the way that you've made so many of these issues comfortable for people to get around. But the issue of women and heart disease is mm. not one that you've been able to make peace with. You're, you're actually angry about it. You're very passionate about it. Well, this. because I cannot bear gender discrimination. I can't bear that women are still second-class citizens. And so they don't get paid as much as men in the workforce. They're only 19% of Congress. And uh, in medical research, it's even worse because, especially heart disease, the research has been done for the last 50 years on men. 
Now, how can you do research about women's heart disease on men? We have different plumbing, yeah. right? We bear yeah. children. Yeah. We have hormones that are different. And uh, it's just not fair. As a matter of fact, um, I found out recently when I went to Washington to lobby for more funds because we are very underfunded women's heart research. And uh, I found out that even the laboratory mice are males. They are? And I said, well, <laughs> why would, we're, we're trying to find out about women's heart disease, which kills more women than men yeah. since 1984, yeah. right? One woman dies of heart disease every minute and women die of heart disease more than all cancers combined. Now, can you imagine that? I couldn't wrap my head around that. I, I swear, I, I checked it out every which way you can. That is the truth, girls and women. And what's happening nowadays is that more young women mm -hmm. are dying of heart disease. Absolutely. Part of this problem, and I think this has been an issue that we've overlooked, is that a lot of doctors practice bikini medicine. You know what That's bikini right. medicine is? is you know, we focus yeah. on yeah. the yeah. parts of the body with the bikini, the bikini covers, your breasts, right. Uh, you know, the, the vaginal area, yes, cervix, right. you know, reproductive organs. Right. I mean, that's and very yet, frustrating. And yet, what's interesting, now, don't get me wrong, breast cancer has done a magnificent job in making people, women especially, aware of what's at stake and so forth. But we haven't caught up with them in terms of how to make women aware of heart disease. And 10 times more women die of heart disease than breast cancer. Yeah. Those are the facts. They can't, uh, people well, can't wrap about, their hand around yeah, About this around. issue, because yeah. th there's something, there are very few people who have syndromes coined after them, but there's something called the Yentl syndrome. <laughs> but just to, as you might suspect, <laughs> you know, if, if women come to the hospital looking like men with their symptoms, and in right. heart disease that's exactly. important, then you get diagnosed correctly. But if you come not looking like a man, what happens? Right you go misdiagnosed and therefore untreated and therefore you could go home the next day after the doctor has said, you know, take an antacid or an aspirin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, a, a lot of women, I mean, stories that I've heard, the next day they're dead in their living room oh. because they weren't taken seriously again, you know? And it's, it's like women stay in the house, blah, blah, blah. But women should understand that because they now go to work and take care of the family, really, they're the center of the family, um, they will put other things ahead of themselves. So they have to know, get heart checked. When you go to your doctor, you ask for an EKG. Ask, tell them your family history. You know, know your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and so forth. Have you ever held a heart? No, but I'd like to. You'd like to? Yes. You want Barbara to hold a heart? Yes. Bring it in, I have been looking forward oh to this day. Delivered right to me? Yes, delivered right to you. <laughs> there are some purple gloves. Okay. Uh, you know, you sp speak beautifully, artistically, about the fact that women's heart disease is emblematic of the fact that women aren't treated right around the world. And I think you're right. And I want women to see, and hopefully you can describe, yeah. now that you can actually put your creative mind to seeing and feeling these organs, mm. what we're really talking about. So this is the majestic female heart. I want mm. you just to hold that. Oh my God, wow. It's quite, this is what they mean by a heavy heart. No, no, that's a, no? yes, that's well, a normal a heart. heart. That's, a, that's a lighthearted person. But I mean, it's really <laughs> substantive. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's special. Very special. It's this coiling python inside your body that, that is this beats fat to, around the heart? There's always a little bit of fat around always. the heart that's because okay. the heart wants a little bit. Right. But let me show you what happens when you have more than a little bit of fat. <gasps> oh my God. This is someone who's had heart damage. See, these are little areas oh where God. they've actually had some surgery done. Oh so let me take God. the, actually, hold your other hand out. Yeah. I want you to feel and compare these and describe this to everybody. My God. And the heart compensates by getting larger. I'll hold this over this way. Right, right. So when you get examined, he could tell, or she could tell, the doctor, could tell if you have an enlarged heart or what? They can tell this pretty quickly. But what you're trying to do and why I adore this mission that you're yeah, on, yeah. is to catch people here right. before it becomes like this. Right. I've seen too many women who should be here who end up like this. Right. So when you realize and appreciate 
Now yeah. that you're actually feeling it for the yeah. first time. Yeah. It's amazing. So you're looking at different ways of getting women to appreciate this reality. And you've right. got this campaign called The Lady Killer. The Lady Killer. Where many women might be, may I take these off? These, yes. Many women might be distressed by what they see, but I, in a sense, wanted to scare them. You know, to bring attention to heart disease in women strikes every age, every color, every uh, nationality, you know. Um, and they know, I want them to know they're at risk. So, Fight the Lady Killer campaign. It's a wonderful one. It's been made possible by the Women's Heart Alliance. It's a joint effort between uh, Barbara's and Women's Heart Center at Cedar sinai and the Perlman Heart Institute at my hospital, New York right. Presbyterian. Please look at these very carefully. For generations, heart disease has been our number one killer, striking women of every age, color, and culture. Fight the Lady Killer is a national campaign to bring awareness to the women's heart health epidemic. Jennifer Hudson is lending her support and making it personal in this new PSA. I don't know about you, but I intend to stay alive. Ed Norton is also getting involved, lending his voice to the cause. I quietly kill one woman every minute, and yet so many of you still act like I don't exist. The campaign hopes to encourage women to talk to their health care providers, understand their risks, and most importantly, get their heart checked. Beautiful. I love the way you, you harvested your creative juices to tell a story, which is really what it is, that might actually resonate for many women for the first time. What's your goal? You're looking at a very emotional approach with these stories. Yeah. I just, you know, I want women to be powerful and to know themselves and care about themselves enough to uh, take some precautions, you know, in life. Like you eat nuts. Yes, I do eat nuts. For, for <laughs> saturated fat, but it's good fat, right? Yep. And grains, certain grains and legumes and so forth and fruit and vegetables. And you have, to, yeah. you have to be able to splurge and, you know, have your piece of cake or something, otherwise. <laughs> What's the point? All right, coming up, like we're gonna talk about the symptoms and the risk factors for heart disease that are unique to women. This is important stuff and the test to keep you safe. Stay with us. Coming up, Barbara Streisand on what's closest to her heart. The beauty of thinking positive. What she wants you to know about symptoms of heart disease. One out of three of you will die of it. And why she's dedicated to fight this number one killer of women. Coming up. It's the worst kept secret in America, but no one expected this. The truth one in five women is hiding, hooked on antidepressants. But at what cost to their health? All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. We're back with my friend Barbara Streisand, who's passionate about combating heart disease in women. She's donated millions of dollars of her own money and helped raise millions more to open the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center. I felt like I was underwater and couldn't breathe. For over a year, Ashley felt like she was having tiny heart attacks all day. So she came here to the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center, where educating, diagnosing, and treating women's heart disease is their primary focus. First I felt nauseous and uh, thought I was getting the flu. And then uh, I had pain down my left arm. I had pain going up into my jaw. I thought maybe I could be having a heart attack. The center is also pioneering long-needed investigations into the specific ways heart disease affects women. Dr. Noel Barry Merz is the center's director. We actually have only been studying the differences between women and men about 15 years, uh, and we're probably about 45 years behind. But the Streisand Clinic is making up time fast through groundbreaking research and state-of-the-art screening. Just about to get into the movies of the uh, images. The center is also developing new tools and treatments that not only save the lives of women like Ashley. I'm really lucky, I had a great medical care. But reduce the chances of women ever developing heart disease. Claire Isabel. We are joined by the director of the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center, Dr. Noel Barry Merce. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. So you're an absolute world expert in this topic, and she really is. I've had the honor of uh, talking to you about these themes a lot. 
The obvious symptoms women know about, high blood pressure, uh, family history, mm -hmm. diabetes. These are issues that I think a lot of folks realize are important risk factors, but there are a lot of secret ones, newly diagnosed and identified ones. Do you want to walk through some of those if you don't mind? And sex specific, so it's an opportunity for us to do better in women. Uh, so number one, of course, is irregular menstrual cycles, sometimes linked with polycystic ovary syndrome, which women may or may not have an infertility problem, but also linked with low estrogen levels. Some women have menstrual irregularities because of other problems, other diseases. Um, adverse pregnancy outcomes, so things that happen during pregnancy, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, or even preeclampsia. Uh, these are complications of pregnancy that then go away but put women at a higher risk for the coming decades of heart disease. Uh, migraine headaches with auras, um, increased risk of stroke and heart disease. Um, and then autoimmune disease, uh, more prevalent in women. So lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, thyroiditis. Um. These are game changer uh, issues because we never thought about these problems before because they weren't usually that commonly found in men. Men don't have menstrual cycle problems. They don't have delivery you know, uh, problems during pregnancy. In addition to the risk factors, then there are the symptoms. And remember, you felt that heart and yeah. you saw how thin that blood vessel mm -hmm. is. The female heart is just very different from a male heart. I'd love if you just go through some of the symptoms, especially the ones that women tend to have more often. Women more often will have things that are ascribed to stomach indigestion, or they might attribute it to esophageal reflux, that you know heartburn feeling, uh, and then extreme fatigue, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain. These are all considered atypical symptoms, and yet with the majority of women now being the victims, they should be typical symptoms. So here's the thing. You are bringing a whole different angle to this problem. Noel and I and many others have been talking about this, but you want to tell the story in a way that captivates women. Well, first of all, um, I saw your show. I think it was last week. Yeah. You had three women on there, very young women, 27, I think, 30 and 32. All three of them have had heart attacks. And it's really hard, and it's wonderful, and I feel bad for the women, and thank God they're okay now, but they have to be careful with their lives and so forth, how they take care of themselves. But it just shows, and more women, younger women are dying more from heart disease, right? They are. It's the one group that it's going up, not going down. By the way, you told me something really wonderful, Dr. Mers, when we first met. Well, we did a TED Talk, and you said, I was sitting with a lot of women, you said, you looked down from the podium and you said, look to your right and look to your left. One in two of you will have cardiovascular disease in your lifetime. One out of three of you will die of it. Ooh. It's true. So, and by the way, the Yentl syndrome, you also <laughs> told me something else that was wonderful. You know, Yentl sy syndrome means that if you present your symptoms like a man, you will get properly diagnosed, probably. They will probably give you the test that shows you what's in the blood for a heart attack, right? Yep. Um, so she said, lie. This is a good <laughs> lie. This is a good lie. In other words, just say, you know, I'm now, I, I'm now feeling chest I'm pains. I'm having chest and, pain. And left arm pain. Oh, I mean, you, it's very you, interesting. To, to mimic a male. To mimic sure. a male, and then they might diagnose you properly. So what are the tests that we should be doing? If folks listen to the videos, right. really, if they understand that, uh, yeah. more about this and they've been scared into action, mm -hmm. what, what should the tests be? So we're very big on get heart checked. This is part of our fight the lady killer. The new guidelines, as you know, came out last year. These are much better guidelines. They are more specific for women and particularly women of color. So it is getting your blood pressure checked, your blood cholesterol checked, your blood sugar checked, uh, and then uh, adding this into that simple calculator that you can download onto a smartphone. If you can get to a pharmacy, you don't even need a healthcare provider, right? Some of them will do the finger stick cholesterol. You could calculate your own risk. You get a 10 year heart disease risk and you get a lifetime heart disease risk. So this is a card that you can actually print out from DrOz.com. The Women's Heart Alliance has made this possible. So yes. You're gonna put it in your wallet after you printed it out. It has all those important heart test numbers. Uh, in addition to having this on OctorOz.com, you guys were very kind enough to write a beautiful piece for the Good Life magazine, which again outlines mm -hmm. in a very clear way what I want you all to pay attention to with your hearts. Mm -hmm. Do it for yourselves, do it for the people that you care in your lives, 
And again, I think it is emblematic of the fact that women aren't cared for by others, and they don't care for themselves the way they need to. That's right. And I love the fact that you're doing this. Do it for yourself, your mother, your daughters. Everybody. Your so okay. I couldn't let you go without taking a moment for all of you. Barbara has had a remarkable accomplishment. This is her new album. It's called Partners. She didn't want me to talk about it. She really didn't want to. I wanted to talk about it. It's another number one hit. Now that makes her the first performer in history to have a number one album in six consecutive <laughs> decades. And I'm only 35. <laughs> That's right. Isn't that amazing? It is quite. I was very proud of it when I heard that. I went, really? Would you yeah, ever was... imagine this would have happened in your life? No. No. No, I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled. What did you think you would be? Well, basically thrilled. No, 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 no. when you were a little kid, years oh, ago. Oh, oh, no, I kind of, I kind of had a feeling about it. You did? Yes, because, because I read a book when I was 16 years old called The Quintessence of Ibsenism by George Bernard Shaw. Oh my goodness. I was going to acting school as a young, you know, I wanted to be an actress. And um, it said that thought transcends matter. And so I thought, Huh, I could think these things and maybe that, you know, the, the strength of the will, whatever, could actually manifest reality. Yeah. So that's the beauty of thinking positive, I think. Well, you've done some wonderful things in your life. Listen, everybody, the entire studio audience is going home with this album. You all got your own copy of Partners. Enjoy it. Be right back. Your body clock dictates what makes you tick. From when you're hungry to when you're tired, knowing yours could be the secret to more energy and a happier life. Learn the tricks to master your body clock to eat, sleep, and work more efficiently. Next. Your body's clock controls so many things, from when you're hungry to when you're tired. So what makes your clock tick? New research tells us there are three types of body clocks, and knowing yours can be the secret to more energy and a longer, happier, and healthier life. You know the saying, the early bird catches the worm? Well, it's true. This early riser body clock is up at 5 a.m. and most in sync with our nine to five world. They're active, cheerful, and generally feel healthier than everyone else. Most of us have this body clock when we're younger, but your clock changes as you age. The most common of the three types is the bounced body clock. Up at seven and in bed by 11. This bounced bird is downright flexible, ready for action morning and night. This body type puts a premium on shut eye and spends the most time in bed. The night owl burns the midnight oil. This body clock type is rarely in bed before 12. They're most energetic in the afternoon and evening and are more creative and can stay mentally alert for more hours than an early riser. Your body clock is determined by genetics. So, which type are you? And what do you need to keep your clock ticking all day long? The first body type is the early riser. Debbie's a classic early riser. She says she wakes up every morning at 5 a.m. on the dot. All right, so I heard about the story from your twin daughters. Uh-oh. Who were kind enough to take a picture for me. Oh, my God. This is you catnapping right around when you're supposed to be running errands. Yeah. And this is actually a very common problem yeah, with this I'm body clock type. Yeah, I'm mortified. Yeah, let me show you someone else who naps. This is Thomas Edison. This is him snapping as he's probably inventing electricity or something. Uh, right? So, you know, he's actually looking pretty comfortable over there. Yeah. How long do you nap for usually? A, a delicious nap for me would be 30 minutes to an hour would be the yummiest. So, Debbie, let me give you some advice. I would love that. Uh, early clock people actually do very well with naps. Oh, good. And I advise you taking it, but you can't take it for more than maybe 15, 20 minutes. Like a cat, like a power like, nap. It has to be a power nap or a cat nap, because when it goes longer than that, you go into the deeper stages of sleep, it knocks you down, and you don't come back from that. In fact, you want to sleep the whole night after that. Right. So that's one big tip. Cat naps, short ones, not the one you were just taking. Okay. Uh, and the second big tip is to do something in the middle of the afternoon that takes a little heat off the rest of your day. Right. So white tea, oolong tea is wonderful. Make a cup of it about three in the afternoon. Uh -huh. Very low in caffeine, so it won't keep you up late. 
but it has a lot of, because it's very young tea, a lot of nutrients that naturally come with tea leaves, uh -huh. which would make you more, feel more energized, buy you an extra few hours, so at least you can get to 9, 9.30 when bedtime hits you. That's perfect, I love that. Thanks Thank for sharing you. your body clock type. Thank okay, you. next up is Kelly. She's the balanced clock type. It's actually the most common type of them all. Welcome to the show. Let's look at your day. Walk me through it if you don't mind. This is pretty typical for a lot of us. Correct, 7 a.m., I'm up. Head right to work after breakfast and lunch around 12.30 and right around after lunch, I'm just... Right woo, in there? Woo, all right, 12.30, oh, I'm just out of it. So let's think of what you do for lunch, which for a lot of us, you know, this is a very common type happen. This is a sandwich, what, what is yes, that, is. by the way? It's a nutty peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Huh. <laughs> Ex extra nuts. Extra nuts, all right. I think this is a problem for you because you need to have something sustaining. You can't get the, the quick bolus of energy because it fades an hour later and then you feel like you're in a coma state. So I want you to add something called pectin to your sandwiches, to your lunch in general. Mm -hmm. It's a dense type of fiber found in many different places. It allows your digestion to slow a little bit so your energy seeps into your body. It gives you the sustaining energy that the body type, clock type you have desperately needs. So one serving of pectin, you can get it many different fashions. Bananas, firm bananas, not when they're soft. You gotta have them when they're a bit firmer. Half a cup of berries has them. There are many sources of pectin. Apples, but put them in there or add them next to it and it'll make you feel a bit more energized for the rest of the afternoon. Great. All right, the next body clock type is the night owl. Teresa says she doesn't go to bed until 2 a.m. I mean, what are you, you're a mom, aren't you? I am a mother. I'm a mother of three boys. I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a three-year-old. Well, they're not up till two in the morning. What are you no, doing? No, they're not. After I tuck them to bed, usually around 7.30, I have mommy time, and that's when the kickboxer comes out. You're a kickboxer? I love kickboxing. All right, don't, hit, don't hurt me. Just uh, kick you, some, hit my, uh, use my ready? left hand. Uh, yes. Well, I'm wearing a skirt, so. All right, well, but I'll be careful, okay. ready? <gasps> and heels. Yeah, don't forget the heels, it's too dangerous. Yeah, okay, sorry, okay. sorry. So, <laughs> so when you do the kickboxing till whatever time you do it, it yeah. obviously about not gonna be. About an hour, and then I'll go um, on the computer. I've always been a night owl. Let me ask you this, when you wake up in the morning, night owl that you are, what's it like? I'm groggy, I am. I go over and I love the snooze button. Uh, Unfortunately, that doesn't work with kids. I tried the snooze button on them, but it yeah. doesn't work. No, they're not snooze <laughs> yeah. buttons. Come over here. So let me show you why the snooze button can really mess up your energy for the rest of the day. Here's your brain asleep. It's enjoying it. Life's really great. And then all of a sudden, the alarm goes off. When the alarm goes off, you're woken up. And you hit the snooze button. Go ahead. And now, because it's a false alarm, because your brain thinks that, you go back to a nice, deep sleep. And then after a few minutes, 10 minutes later, what happens? The alarm goes off again, wakes you up again, hit it again. Now your brain is taken by surprise. It results in this groggy, fuzzy feeling, which we've all lived through. When your brain is going back and forth through these deep layers of sleep that we're not supposed to go through, you're supposed to get up and go. So I don't want you doing that anymore. Okay. From now on, when that alarm goes off, you know you to get up. So I want everyone across America, set the alarm, 10 minutes later or 20 minutes later, so you forget the snooze. It's a bad idea. No one that goes off, you're up. And because of that, you'll avoid this sort of craziness that happens to our brain basically with that snooze button. Can you do this for me? <laughs> I will, Dr. Oz. Those kids of yours will appreciate it very much. And you'll kickbox even better. <laughs> All right, you can take a quiz to find out your body clock type on DrOz.com. We'll be right back. Coming up next, has reading food labels become so intricate, complicated, and completely confusing? You just don't know what they stand for. You can learn to decode what your health food labels really mean. Coming up next on The Dr. Oz Show. Discover your body's true age with real age. Take the test and get personalized tips to grow younger. Visit DrOz.com today. It's the worst kept secret in America, but no one expected this. The truth one in five women is hiding, hooked on antidepressants. But at what cost to their health? All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. How many of you have looked at these food labels and don't know what they mean? Well, you're not alone. Food labels have become so intricate, so complicated, and downright confusing, you just don't know what they mean. So today, I enlisted an expert to help you decode what your health food labels really mean. Stephanie Sachs is here. She's a culinary nutritionist and author of the new book, What the Fork Are You Eating? Great title, by the way. Thank you. 
When did and how did food labels become such a catastrophe, so confusing? You know, it's so true. I think really what's happened is our government does not really regulate a lot of these labels. They define some of them, but they don't regulate them. And so companies take it upon themselves to smack what kind of labels they want or claims on their food with little regulation. So the first all uh, they we're going to talk about today, because I've got a bunch of them. Uh -huh. I'm on the other side if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to spin this. It is called... The all-natural label. <laughs> How many people in the audience you know what all-natural means? Nothing. Confident? Some, some people say nothing, some people say everything. Here, let me go for you first. Anything artificial. It means? It doesn't have anything artificial Okay, in that's it. what all-natural means. What does it mean to you? Healthy. Healthy, good. Good for my family. Healthy, uh, food that you should be eating. Right, it's better to have all-natural food, right? Right. It does. Or is that true? <laughs> Stephanie, why is this label so confusing? What does all-natural really mean? So unfortunately, all natural is really not defined by our government. It simply means minimally processed. And so companies today are slapping all natural on everything from cereal that's been highly processed to a bag of whole oats, which are truly all natural. So what do we do instead? What do we look for? What we can look for is we can look at the ingredient lists because the ingredient lists tell the story of our food. That's really where it begins. See, all of you guys got it wrong. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came to work today? All right, the next health label is one that is equally confusing to me. Yeah. It is antibiotic free. Now, I gotta say, this seems pretty obvious. Why is it deceiving? It, it does seem obvious. And again, this is defined by our government, by the USDA, but again, it's not highly regulated. So how do you actually know if it's truly antibiotic free? That's a free? great question. And what you have to do is look for third party verification. So third party verification comes through other organizations. So USDA Organic is one, Certified Naturally Grown. And there are many others out there that are actually going to farms and certifying them and ensuring that these producers are actually doing what they say they're doing. All right, this last uh, label, the next one, not last one, that needs decoding is one that I find extremely confusing. It's in the bread aisle. Yes. It's whole grain. Yeah, it's also in the cookie aisle. Okay. Is that a good thing, whole grain or not? Oh, I love this show. <laughs> I love the audience, everything about it. Why is whole grain not as good as it seems? Okay, so we do want whole grain, okay? Ideally, if it's truly whole grain. So again, there's a third party verification, the Whole Grains Council, that will verify that whole grains are in fact used and that contains the entire grain intact and that has the most nutrition, okay? So does that doesn't have to be true when it says whole grain? Well, not necessarily, no. You can go and you can buy a loaf of bread. So we see this loaf of bread here, yeah. for example, and whether it's, it looks like it's whole wheat based or it's white flour and it can have oats on the outside, and you can presume that it says it, that it's whole grain. It can say whole grain and you can presume it, that, that it is whole grain. When in fact, if you turn the ingredient list over and you look, the first ingredient can be enriched wheat flour. Yeah. You want it to say 100% whole wheat flour, and then you want other grains in there like barley, oats, rye, so I always, buckwheat. So when I go shopping, look for 100% whole grain. Is that fine? 100% whole grain, but again, you want to flip it over. The ingredients are telling the story of your food. Just to make sure. All right, there's another label that most of you probably haven't seen before. It's a label that's popping up in stores all across America. So I was curious how many of you knew what it was. Look at this label right there. So I actually took a poll on DrRoz.com because I was curious what generally is being thought. 72% of our audience, the smartest in television, has never seen this label before. So Stephanie, what's the label? What does it yeah, mean? Yeah, so that's the red Dora symbol. And the red Dora symbol means that your food has been irradiated. So it's been exposed to radiation. Gamma rays is one of them. X-rays, okay, electrons to prevent foodborne illness, spoilage, insect infestation, that's what it's, it's there for. So it's used for theoretically good reasons, but you should know what it is. Yeah. Because some of us, if we're gonna buy something that's alive, like a nut, might not wanna have it irradiated. So I just think you should understand what these labels are. Well, and that's what's critically important, is people should make choices from a place of knowledge versus not really understanding what a lot of these things on our foods are. So I always say, turn over the ingredients, look at the ingredients, and make some better choices. That's the main takeaway. I've got a wonderful list of food labels and some information to help keep you out of trouble. My guide's on DrRoz.com. Be right back. Coming up, a garbage man, once nearly homeless himself, is inspired to give back to the needy along his daily route. His selfless generosity of feeding the hungry became his life's mission. The inspiring story of how one family can make a difference. Next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? Make your 
up Quentin and today. Go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. <laughs> Inspiration can strike you at any time. That's exactly what happened to Arnold Harvey, a garbage man inspired to give back after noticing homeless people on his trash route. Now, more than seven years later, Arnold and his wife, Teresa, have made it a family mission to lend a hand. It's 5 a.m. in Silver Spring, Maryland. And while most people are still home asleep, Arnold Harvey is already hard at work. I am Arnold Harvey. I am a trash man. I'm just an ordinary guy. This trash man is far from ordinary. In fact, to the homeless, he is an angel. See, he only got one blanket. This isn't enough. So we're going to leave this blanket. I'm going to put this on him while I'm here. Hey, man, it's Arnold. How you doing? Great. Good to see you, man. God bless you, man. Arnold drops off backpacks filled with food, blankets, and toiletries. He calls them love bags to anyone he finds sleeping on the streets. Which one? Are you ready? Y'all already had them picked out. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good to see you this morning, Good man. Good to see you too, bro. You, know? you, you bless me. You yeah, bless man. me. That, that's, that's what Including JR and Keith, who had just woken up. Imagine being on the edge and somebody saying, jump. But you know you can't jump because it's so far down. But then this man comes out here with a backpack and pulls me back and says, you don't need to jump off that ledge. You don't need to jump off that ledge. I'm going to help you. Arnold's goodwill towards the homeless started in 2007, after the recession, when he noticed more people showing up on the streets. Two o'clock in the morning, I was going along my route, and I went to lift up an a eight-yard trash can. And uh, once I got it off the ground, and my headlights hit a family of four. Between the, the can itself and the fence is where they were laying at, four of them. It touched my heart real deeply, and uh, I think it changed all of our lives that day. With the help of his wife, Teresa, Arnold jumped into action. They began collecting clothing and coats and made lunches to hand out to the homeless. Brown bag lunches started very simple. In our kitchen, with peanut butter and jelly and whatever we could gather. Yeah, we didn't know if they were going to be acceptable to them or not, but they took them right off. Those first steps led the couple to create a nonprofit called God's Connection Transition. GCT. Today, GCT provides food and supplies to 5,000 families a month. We schedule appointments, the shoppers come in, they're able to pick freely. It's just a, a way of sense of freedom that you're not in the situation that you're in. They don't judge, they don't make you feel any less of a person. I don't have to worry about where my next meal is going to come from. For those hardest hit, the Harvey's acts of kindness provide comfort and even a little hope. Everyone goes through a storm. It's just how you go about it, how you approach it, but it too shall pass. We just got to outlast the storm by one day, and I just want to be there to help someone through their storm. Please welcome Arnold and Teresa Harvey. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How have you seen your work transform people's lives? Uh, so many ways. I've seen so many people changed by it, but there's one that comes to mind. There's a guy that's been fighting cancer for a few years on the street who's finally got his first apartment. Uh, he comes back to the nonprofit to serve, to give back for those who's coming up behind him. Oh, it does touch your heart, as you said. Yeah. You were once on the other side of this equation. You were nearly homeless yourself. How does that change your perspective? Well, for us, it's, um, you know, that there's hope on every end of the line. There's, there's no situation that you cannot, cannot get over the challenge, and there's always hope. There's always people like you willing to chip in. Yeah, there's, because somebody chipped in when we were down and out. And the kindness that they put in, you know, sold into our lives is now we're sowing into somebody else's lives, and it's just going on and on. It's uh, like a ripple effect. That's how we've always been. That's why we've always supported each other. Teresa, how's this changed your family? Um, well, it, as anything, it's, um, it's a family business, so everybody <laughs> has to pitch in. Um, and, you know, it brings them together. There's events that we do that 
my son-in-law is the Santa Claus, the, the <laughs> <laughs> you know, my daughter, everybody's had a piece of, of what we've done. You know, it's not just, just him and I, it's, it's a family unit. But thanks for sharing the beautiful tasks, the beautiful work that you're doing with all of us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank God you. bless you all. God bless Thank you, you too. We'll be right back. It's the worst kept secret in America, but no one expected this. The truth one in five women is hiding, hooked on antidepressants. But at what cost to their health? All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. It's interesting how some of life's greatest lessons can be found in children's books. And chances are you didn't realize this back when you were kids. So take this quote from Peter Penn. I love this book. The moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease forever to be able to do it. So you believe in yourselves. Next, from Winnie the Pooh, which influenced probably all of us. How do you spell love? You don't spell it, you feel it. Isn't that great? And of course, for my favorite book, The Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. And sometimes it's only when we get older that we learn to fully appreciate, understand the poignant words from our childhood entertainment, because home means a lot. And home is where our families are. It's not a physical place. Okay, now it's time for case you missed it. First, we had Barbara Streisand on the show today, and she shared her passion. Wasn't he great? Uh, she wanted to fight against heart disease. She thinks it's emblematic that, that we have a problem with women and heart disease, of how we don't treat women in general well. And she's using emotion and passion uh, and her director's skills uh, to make stories come alive, to teach women to take care of themselves. And we went over some symptoms of a heart attack in women that can be unique. So I want you all to be aware of them because they affect women more than men. If you have nausea, vomiting, if you have diarrhea, cold chills, pain in your jaw or back pain, you should be thinking in your head, maybe it's a heart problem, get yourself checked out. Then we asked the question, what's your body clock type? This is a genetic issue. Some of us wake up at different times. Some of us are larks, get up early. Some of us are night owls. For those of you who are night owls, I want you to avoid hitting this baby right here, this snooze button. Instead of making your brain go in and out of sleep, which messes up your energy for the day, set your alarm for the latest possible time, and then when it's time to get up, just do it. And when you do it, get out of bed and use light as an ally. Light's a key player regulating the body clock. So I want you to brush your teeth in a bright light, as bright as you can. Open your eyes like this. Open the curtains and the blinds. Let the light wake you up. It's your circadian rhythm, makes the rest of your day more energetic. And lastly, we went over how to decode your food labels. One important role, I want everyone to know that the words all natural, all natural don't always mean what they should. So instead of paying attention to just this label, which is overused and not that accurate and not regulated, I want you to look at the ingredients in your food. Make sure the first five ingredients in the back package are recognizable. If they are, then it's probably all natural. Finally, I'm gonna close with a warning. Please be careful about what you're buying online, especially weight loss pills. Dubious people online make it seem like I'm endorsing their products. I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, please go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time.